The wheel. It was invented a long time ago, around 3500 BC. You don't need to know that. But if you're looking for a set of new bike wheels, it can be a bit confusing. There are hundreds of different options and types to choose from, but fear not. I'm gonna explain all the different types and what they mean so that you can pick the best ones for you in this ultimate comprehensive wheel buyer's guide. Let's go. With all the different types of wheels out there, it can get wheelie confusing. But what I'm gonna do is make this nice and easy for everyone. I'm gonna explain the different features and types of wheels and what they mean, and then I'm gonna break it down into different price points so that you know what you can expect to get for your cash. The first thing to be aware of is rim brake or disc brake wheels. Now, depending on the braking system that's on your bike, that will dictate which you need. And they're not cross compatible. If you've got rim brakes, you need rim brake wheels and you can't really convert one into the other either. Fortunately, most wheels these days are available in both rim brake versions and disc brake versions for a comparable price. A key thing is that disc brake wheels, 99% of the time, use a 12 millimeter through axle to secure them in place, whereas rim brake wheels, 99.9% .9 of the time, use a quick release skewer like this, and these correspond to different dropouts that are on those bikes too. If you're getting disc brake wheels, one thing to be aware of are the two different types of disc brake attachment onto your wheels, and this will depend on the type of hub that your wheel has. So the two types are six bolt, which is on this wheel, and center lock, which is on this wheel. Both systems work equally well. I'm a fan of center lock simply because I'm lazy and it means to put the disc on and off, I only have to undo one bolt, and it just uses a cassette lock ring tool. The next thing you need to be aware of is the type of tires you need for your wheels. And there are three types, starting with these, the oldest kind, tubulars. In the olden days, pretty much all road bike tires were tubulars like this. So it's a tire with an inner tube sewn inside the carcass on the underside, and then this gets glued onto the wheel rim. They're lighter than the other tire systems, but they are a bit slower rolling. They're still used today in specialist applications such as track cycling, hill climb racing, and by some pros in the Tour de France. However, tubulars are being replaced by the other two types of tires, clinchers and tubeless. Clinchers like this are by far the most common. They feature a clincher tire, which is then fitted onto a hooked rim and an inner tube is inserted inside. Tubeless wheels are becoming increasingly popular. They feature a different internal rim shape to a standard clincher, and this allows you to run them tubeless and means you can get rid of your inner tube. Now, in place of that, you'd run a dedicated tubeless tire and some sealant. But be warned, you can't run a tubeless setup on a clincher wheel that's not designed for tubeless. It isn't safe. Tubeless has the advantage that it can seal punctures on the fly as you ride, and it has low rolling resistance, making it fast. Next comes the material that your wheels are made from. Road bike wheels are typically either alloy or carbon. Carbon is lighter and more expensive, but more on that in a moment. Carbon wheels can also be deeper and more aerodynamic, but rim brake carbon wheels are notoriously bad at braking in the wet. Rim brake wheels wear at the rim from the erosion of the braking surface over time, whereas disc brake wheels can last longer because they only wear on the disc and the rotors can be replaced. Rim width. Over the last few years, wheels have been getting wider and wider, and this is following the trend for wider tires. 10 years ago, 14 millimeters wide internal width was the kind of standard that came with most wheels, whereas today, it's typically around 19 millimeters internal width, which is ideal for 25 millimeter tires so that they can sit nice and flush and have a nice big contact patch. However, wheels get even wider now. You can also get wheels with sort of 22, 23 millimeters internal width, which is massive and ideal for bigger tires, such as 28 millimeters and above, which gives you added flexibility if you want to ride your bike both on the road with increased comfort, but also fit some gravel tires and take it off-road. 
track wheels and road wheels are different too. So wheels designed for the road have a free hub on the rear wheel, and this is where you can attach your sprockets or your cassette. Whereas track wheels or single speed wheels don't have a free hub or space for the cassette as they just are designed to accommodate a single sprocket. The other thing to note with free hubs is that there are different types. SRAM and Shimano free hub bodies are compatible with each other, whereas Campagnolo use a different type. And if you're using a 12 speed cassette, they can use a different type of free hub too. Older systems, such as the pre Shimano Hyperglide cassettes, had a different spline pattern, meaning they require a different free hub as well. I won't go into all the detail of that here, but just be aware of it and make sure that you get the right free hub body for the cassette you intend to use. Now let's look at the price of wheels and what you can expect for your money, starting with the 500 pounds, euros or dollars price point, which is my favorite price point. Now, the things that impact the price of a wheel are weight, lighter is more expensive, aerodynamics, the more aero a wheel is, is more expensive, and then the durability and the build quality or the use of exotic components and materials. These two will make the wheel more expensive. The 500 pounds, euros, dollars price point is a really competitive one and represents a significant upgrade on the wheels that came with your bike if it was an entry level one. And after tires and inner tubes, in our experience, wheels are the biggest bang for your buck upgrade and will transform your bike. At this price, you're typically looking at an alloy rim rather than carbon and quite shallow as well, usually below 30 millimeters in depth. They're likely to be lighter than the entry level wheels that your bike came with, although not by a huge amount. They will also probably be stiffer and better built with higher quality hubs. At this price, these aren't gonna be the lightest wheels in the world, but they're typically available under two kilograms and they won't have the latest tech. But thanks to the way that manufacturers trickle down tech, you are getting tech features on these wheels that a few years ago was top of the range. The hubs will typically feature sealed cartridge bearings, which are pretty easy to replace. Although some brands such as Campagnolo and Shimano still use cup and cone bearings in a lot of their hubs. These can be a little bit trickier to maintain for an amateur inexperienced mechanic. It's not a bad thing, it's just something to consider. Also try and look for a wheel or a brand that uses parts and replacement bearings that are readily available and accessible so that you're not left stuck in the future. And another final feature to look out for is a wheel such as this GRX Shimano one that is tubeless compatible. You might not want to use tubeless right now, but it's good to have the option in the future and it kind of future proofs your bike. Ooh, and I nearly forgot, even at the 500 pound mark, free hubs start to sound sweet. Oh, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yes. Moving on to the up to a thousand pounds, euros or dollars mark. And at this point, you have, broadly speaking, two options. You can either go for lighter, stiffer, shallow, alloy wheels, or you can move into the realms of entry level carbon and go for something a bit deeper and a bit more aerodynamic, although it will be slightly heavier. This is a good option if you're wanting to get that extra aerodynamic advantage and are perhaps considering some racing. The aero carbon wheels at this price point are typically not quite as refined as that from more established brands, and they typically come from an open mold. This means you'll often see wheels that are mass produced by a company in an open mold in the Far East, and then a smaller company will market them and attach their branding to them. Another thing you will see from more established brands is that they will have previous wheels from a few years ago that have trickled down into lower price points, such as, well, these Jura Ace wheels we have here. The level of R&D and aerodynamic refinement of wheels at this price is typically not as comprehensive as those in the higher prices. However, wheels at this price will make a noticeable difference to the way your bike rides. And although they will be more aerodynamic and lighter, they won't be the most aerodynamic or the lightest. You are likely to get improved 
better quality components and hubs over the previous price point, and those free hubs that sound mint. Oh yeah, sounds good though, doesn't it? Next comes the 1,000 to 2,000 pounds, euros, dollars mark. And at this point, you're talking serious wheels. I mean, really, really good kit. And for me, this is the sweet spot price because wheels beyond this price will be slightly lighter and they will be slightly more aero, but you really are talking diminishing returns. Not all wheel brands go beyond this price. For many, it represents their, their top end wheel sets, meaning that you can often find some of the latest tech in this price bracket. And wheels within this price range typically weigh around 1400 to 1600 grams, depending on the depth. In addition to being lightweight, wheels in this bracket are typically pretty aero and have been refined in a wind tunnel or with CFD analysis. They also have good quality bearings and a nice free hub. They should be tubeless ready, look for that. And you can start to expect even carbon spokes on some wheels too. They should be reliable and robust and really be a sort of no compromise wheel set. Beyond this though, we're talking the blow the budget money is no object wheels. The best of the best, the latest most sophisticated wheels available to humanity. Something like this Zip NSW353 is a perfect example of that. You've got a really exotic rim profile that's been created through extensive R&D. The latest hub designs, such as the Cognition hubs being a great example on zip wheels, that are designed to reduce friction and drag with clever designs. Things like ceramic bearings are also employed. And the weight will be low too. If you're on an ultra light set, then they can weigh typically between 900 grams and 1200 grams, which just feels incredible on a climb. If you're going for an aero set, then you're looking up towards 1500 grams. Even things that you might not think of, such as the quick release levers, will have stepped up in terms of performance. You'll get super light ones, often made of titanium, and it's just that level and attention to detail that really does separate the super top end wheels from the rest. At this price, you will also see specialist wheels such as the discs used on the track by the pros, and also some exotic time trial wheels used on the road. But although you and I can buy these wheels. They tend to not be sold in huge numbers and are mainly the preserve of pro riders. I hope you found this video on wheels useful. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up as it helps support the channel. And if you've got any questions that we haven't answered, simply fire them down in the comments section below and we'll do our best to answer them.